tenacity, the purpose that we had in the first half, it just dissipated in the second half. And, and they, they were a good part of that. They did a good job. The Spurs built up a huge lead in Oklahoma City last night and then watched the Thunder come back to win the game in big board sports. Trey Jones and the Spurs led the Thunder by as many as 20 points early in the third quarter last night, and it looked like they were going to snap their eight-game losing streak, but the Thunder, well, they came back thanks to a strong fourth quarter. Silver and Black led 77-60 to at halftime and 96-88 to after three quarters. Then the Thunder dominated the fourth quarter, outscoring the Spurs 31-15 to to stage a massive comeback. Thunder win the ball game 119 to 111, handing the Spurs their ninth straight loss. Yes, of course. Obviously, this is a tough loss. Like We expected to come out here and win this game. We did win this game, so it's a tough loss. We'll watch film and we'll try and learn from it. 48 minutes is a long time. We've had a lot of good halves or you know two and a half quarters and all that, but rarely we put uh, four quarters of fundamental sound defense and offense together. Yeah, part of it's a young team. They're a young team too, and they did it. So they deserve credit. Spurs are back home to host the Pelicans tomorrow night at seven. And check it out, the Pels are currently third best in the Western Ooh. Conference in the NBA. How about that one? And unfortunately, due to some technical difficulties, I do not have the UTSA football stuff I wanted to talk about or the Incarnate Word video and sound I wanted to talk about. But UTSA and UNT, of course, getting ready for part two of the season. But now they're playing for the Conference USA Championship. And some of the defenders in UTSA were telling us during their media veil earlier this week that UNT's offense is really good. We all know that. They're one of the top rushing offenses in Conference USA. Somehow the U UTSA was able to slow them down last time. So they know, though, that the Mean Green they're going to leave it all out on the table. They're going to bring the kitchen sink, every type of sink you can think of, because they're going to try to do everything they can to beat UTSA. And they always talk about how it's hard to play a team twice in the same year. So we'll see. And how they, they kind of know their tricks now. Yeah. You know, it's up their sleeve. Oh, yeah. So this is going to be fun. And it's Friday night, so we need to make sure if you're free on Friday night, Buy a ticket and go to the game. Yeah, let, let's pack the dome. I mean, Coach Traylor yeah. and them want to get a good 40, 45, 50,000 in there. So hopefully, yeah, we can do that. We even had the mayor on, I think, yesterday, the day before, yeah. talking about how he would like to see the dome packed. And then UIW playing. Yeah, and, hey, get out to uh, Incarnate Word yeah. Saturday afternoon. I believe their game is at 1 o'clock, second round of the FCS playoffs. So let's get out there and pack Gale and Tom Benson Stadium as well and give the Cardinals just as much love. You yeah. painted a great picture, so I really didn't need the video. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I tried. I, I, visioned it. I tried. Hey, I had 315 to film. We're closing in on it right now. I can see the All clock. All right. There well, go. we got a lot of football coming up. Yep. We need to support it. All right. If your holiday travel was put on ice because of widespread inflation in December, no fear. We have the ways you can still go and not bust your budget. Now to Idaho and the murders of four University of Idaho students. For the very first time since the investigation began, the police chief has sat down to talk and he is asking people for patience. As ABC's Rita Roy reports, the departing, uh, the, the part that they're working on right now is sifting through a lot of tips and evidence. Across the state of Idaho, candlelight vigils to remember the four University of Idaho students stabbed to death in their off-campus apartment. When I would meet people, and the first thing I'd say is, well, my, I have this daughter and she's, she works hard and she has all these great friends in the sorority. The search for a killer now in its third week. Police say they still have no suspect or murder weapon. Make sure that you spend as much time as possible with those people because time is precious and it's something you can't get back. Authorities sifting through a mountain of tips and evidence. The police chief speaking to ABC in his first sit down interview since the murders. We're going to provide as many answers as we can. Authorities maintain this was a targeted and isolated attack, but won't say why they think that. Part of that investigation, trying to pull the pieces in that will help give us the before, the during, and the after. So we're trained um, very well.
We're also aware when we need to bring in the Idaho State Police and the FBI or ATF. With a multi-agency effort underway, police asking the community for patience as they work to find the person responsible. When we do, it'll be a, it'll be one of those days that um, a lot of relief will come to our community. And he promises not to let this case go cold. Investigators tell ABC News one victim made several comments to friends and family about a possible stalker. The police chief says detectives are looking into that. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Prosecutors are continuing their closing argument in the Harvey Weinstein Los Angeles trial today. He's charged with two counts of rape and five counts of sexual assault. He's pleaded not guilty to all charges. In yesterday's arguments, the L.A. County District... The L.A. County Deputy District Attorney said Weinstein used his Hollywood power to prey on women. The defense has argued his accusers either fabricated their stories or had consensual relationships with him. The U.S. might be seeing a break in inflation. According to the Commerce Department, the Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index increased 6%. In October, that's as compared to last month, or rather that month last year. It's also down from the revised 6.3% annual increase from September. The PCE is the preferred gauge of the Federal Reserve uses uh, to measure inflation because of how it pre presents consumer price information. Inflation has been a major concern for the Fed this year, and they have been trying to bring it down by raising interest rates over the past few months. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell says that these higher interest rates could possibly start to ease by December. The cost of filling up is going down. According to AAA, the national average for a gallon of gas is $3.47. That's down 12 cents from last week and 29 cents from the past month. It's also the first time the national average has been below 350 since February when Russia started its invasion of Ukraine. Other factors also responsible for this downward trend at the pumps, including fears of possible U.S. recession and Chinese COVID lockdowns. Some analysts predict gas prices will keep falling as we head toward the end of the year and towards the holiday season. Gas Buddy says they could drop below $3 per gallon by Christmas. The Orion spacecraft beginning its trip back to Earth, and it is moving at over 2,000 miles an hour. The spacecraft, which launched from Kennedy Space Center in Florida on November 16th, is part of NASA's historic Artemis I mission, the goal of the mission to test whether Orion can safely carry humans. And it wants to get astronauts back on the moon's surface for the first time since the 1970s. Earlier this week, Orion hit 270,000 miles from Earth, and that shattered a previous record for the longest distance ever reached by a spacecraft designed to carry humans. Outside with LifeCam, if there were men on the moon or women on the moon, they couldn't see Texas. No, it's, covered. it's pretty thick out there, Justin. That's, that's a very valid point. Something I didn't think of, but that is valid, David. Uh, I like that. A lot of clouds, at least at the moment. Hey, I want to show you a picture here on KSAC Connect. Uh, are we sure this isn't a painting? I mean, that looks like a painting to me. That is a beautiful shot. Gets you in the Christmas spirit. That's out in Bandera. A toasty, warm hill country morning. I'd say so. Very well done. Love the decorations. Love the feeling going on there. Uh, thank you for sending that in. And uh, here's a look at the satellite picture. It looks like the satellite's cutting out a little bit, but you get the idea. There's a lot of clouds surging in here and temperatures right now underneath those clouds aren't warming much. 50 degrees at the airport, 49 Kerrville, 51 Hondo, 53 Kachua. It's a chilly day and with the clouds in place, you're just not going to see much movement. Uh, temperatures will probably make it into the mid 50s today here in town. We may even see some 40s holding in places like Bernie stage and uh, maybe up towards comfort. Uh, day planner here, 54 degrees at 4 o'clock, 54 at 6 p.m. cloudy. We're going to start to add introduce some rain chances, very small rain chances as we get into tonight. And when we say rain, we mean drizzle, uh, fog and drizzle. It's all the light stuff. But as we know, that can cause some headaches when it comes to uh, driving. So be aware tomorrow morning, we'll probably see some wet roads and you'll still want to send the kids to school with uh, with the jackets is uh, won't warm up all that much tomorrow. We're going to take a look at the weekend forecast and get set for next week too. coming up in just a few minutes. 
An interesting Sunday afternoon in Houston when former Texan quarterback Deshaun Watson returns to town to play for the Browns. Larry Mears with reaction coming up in sports. In December. Yep, that's where we are right now, and the winter holidays are fast approaching. If you missed the Travel Tuesday deals, you could still save some cash on your next trip. It starts with the way you plan. If you, like me, missed out on the savings for Travel Tuesday, I didn't even know it was happening. You still have options if you're looking for some good deals on flights for your end of the year plans. However, it does mean you'll have to change the way that you plan your trip. So get ready. Travel experts suggest you flip the process on its head and set price as the top priority. Step one, look, where are there cheap flights available right now out of my home airport? Step two, of those places that are cheap, decide which one interests you the most. And then step three, what dates work for your schedule? Another pro tip to say, fly on the holiday itself. I did that to my son on Thanksgiving. I made him fly on Thanksgiving. Your best bet to find a bargain, though, is to be flexible. So I guess if the cheapest flight you could find is to Hawaii, then you just go to Hawaii? <laughs> is that how that, is that I how think that that's a great idea. <laughs> and, okay. and, you know, it, it's, he's right about the, you know, fly on the holiday, because that's actually yeah. the only time during the holidays when the airports aren't absolutely insane. It's true. True. Hawaii sounds nice right now. Yeah. Let's really do does. that. Wanna? Works. Yeah. Let's make it happen. Is it cloudy in Hawaii? Uh, probably a little bit, actually. And of course, you're dealing with the volcano, so it's not all great out there. But uh, at any rate, 50 degrees so far today, 41. The low this morning averages are 67 and 45. We'll be below average today. The record is 82. That's nowhere in our sights here. That was set back in 1894. It stays pretty cool as we head into the weekend with another cold front on Saturday. What does that mean for the forecast? We'll show you coming up. It's official. District 10 now has a council member again. The San Antonio City Council choosing Mike Gallagher to temporarily replace Clayton Perry. It was a unanimous vote, 10 to 0. Yeah, it actually just happened a few minutes ago. Perry is on a leave of absence that he faces legal problems in the wake of his self-confessed role in that hit and run crash. Gallagher being sworn in as we speak, he will hold the seat until either Perry returns or his term ends in early June next year. We are keeping an eye on ever changing weather right now. I'm telling you, this morning I got up, I was confused. Is this the day it's warm or is this the day it's cold? Is it going to rain? It's I mean, we have had just about everything but snow and sleet this week. It, well, that's true. And it, it, uh, it keeps you on your toes this time of year. This is the, the month where we do get quite a few fronts. So it'll, it'll be a lot of back and forth. And, uh, you know, I'm going to do some shameless plugging here, but the KSAT weather app, we send you out a, a push alert every morning. I need one of those. On. Yeah. Uh, so if you have the KSAT weather app, it's always good. We'll, uh, we'll send you out a personalized message in the morning and get you set for your day. As you go outside, I always say this shot's a little deceiving. It looks kind of darker and drearier than it really is. We're shooting through a lot of atmosphere here, but you get the general idea. It is cloudy. 50 degrees right now. Northerly winds at about 6. Dew point is at 36. We did have a wind chill earlier that has since gone as temperatures rise above 50 degrees. The case at 12 hour forecast 54 degrees at 3 o'clock. Rain chances not really there today. And as we get into tonight, we will start to add some small rain chances. And by the way, notice temperatures hold really pretty steady. We'll warm a few more degrees and then it'll just hold right there into tonight. Then we start to add in rain chances, but these aren't significant rain chances. It's the light drizzle, the kind that, you know, uh, you, you do have to use wind, your windshield wipers, but it doesn't account for a whole lot of rain. And we're not going to see a lot of appreciable rain, I think, going forward. Uh, 49 degrees, Kerrville 51, Hondo 15, New Valley. Pretty uniform numbers. That's what happens when you have all this cloud cover in place. A blanket of clouds over top of us. Uh, 51 down there in Stenson. We're checking in at 54 in Castroville, and there are all those clouds. Uh, they've started to thicken up a little bit, too, here over San Antonio. So very little sun getting through, if any. And as I said, that just doesn't allow for us to warm up. And here's why. We've got high pressure now anchored over Kentucky, and the flow is now coming off the Gulf of Mexico and you start to get that cloud cover developing, kind of shows you the, the flow of uh, everything going on. Let's look at the forecast here in clouds, more clouds. And then by 10 o'clock, 
It is showing some of these light returns uh, probably takes until overnight until we see any of that drizzle really developing. We also have to watch out for some fog. So I think visibility could drop at a few spots tomorrow morning. You're going to be battling that and then the threat for just the, the sprinkly drizzly stuff. I think about a 30% chance of that going into tomorrow morning. This is 6 a.m. tomorrow. And then the question tomorrow will be, do the clouds break up? They're going to try. This is midday, it's still cloudy. If, if that's going to happen here in San Antonio, it's going to be late in the day. So that's why temperatures, yes, they do warm up tomorrow, but not a whole lot. If you're out west, then you'll see a, a somewhat warmer day because I do think the sun pops out there. But in general, cloudy today, mostly cloudy tomorrow, cloudy on Saturday, cloudy on Sunday. It's going to be a gray stretch. So just know that if uh, you're hoping for some sun, there's not going to be a lot there. Let me show you the high temperatures this week, and they do bounce around because we've got cold fronts. So Friday we jump up, we're up to 68. That's pretty much about average. Then we drop back down by Saturday afternoon behind a cold front, jump back up to average on Sunday, and it will likely go above average Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday into the 70s. And then we probably get some sort of front or another front next week. But that's just how we roll here in December. And uh, what's ahead? We kind of uh, talked about this, but just to sum it up, drizzle and fog developing tonight. And then tomorrow clouds hold most of the day and then we get that front midday Saturday, which means cooler weather. So here it all is together on the seven day uh, 59 Saturday, but that's after starting off at 63 in the morning. So it's kind of one of those uh, days where we flip flop. We start off warmer and then end up cooler. Uh, 67 on Sunday, a small chance for shower and cloudy. 77 Monday, as we said, there could be more drizzle and fog Monday morning. But a lot of clouds there all the way through midweek next week. We'll be right back. We have more late breaking news for you now. Just minutes ago, we were notified by an attorney for Officer Brennan. He is the ex San Antonio police officer who is right now facing charges. James Brennan, who's facing charges in the shooting of Eric Cantu back on October 1st. Of course, that happened on the north side of San Antonio in a McDonald's parking lot. Eric Cantu was sitting in a car when Officer Brennan approached him, opened his door, wanted to get out. And then that's when um, Eric Cantu pulled away from the officer. And as he was driving off, the officer shot him several times. Cantu has spent several weeks in the hospital, but we understand that he is out of the hospital now. So that's good news for Eric Cantu. But once again, the officer, James Brennan, has been indicted. That's right. A grand jury hearing the charges against him. We don't know exactly what was returned by that grand jury. There will be a news conference later at 4 o'clock. And, of course, KSAT 12 News and KSAT.com will have that for you as well. Now we turn to sports. Thank you guys. The Houston Texans are getting ready to host the Cleveland Browns and their former quarterback, Deshaun Watson. The 60 year QB sat out all of last season in Houston after becoming disgruntled while the team worked on a trade and then later faced 25 civil lawsuits alleging sexual misconduct during massages. In addition to his multiple settlements, Watson was also suspended 11 games this season for violating the NFL's personal conduct policy. Now he's back and set to face Lovey Smith and the Texans Sunday at noon at NRG Stadium. I have no idea. I mean, he hadn't played for a long period of time, but uh, we hope that uh, there's some rust and all those things. But no, that's not where, what we're telling. We're telling them that we're showing them the stats. One of the best offenses in the league statistically, adding a, a great player. So that should say that they're going to be better. That's what we're. That's how we're going into the football game. Yeah, it'll be uh, interesting to see what you do. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of Sean. He's a great teammate here while he was here. Um, I'm happy to see him doing good things. You know, but you know, I'm hoping we get the dub. But you know, it's always good to see you know former teammates you know doing good with other teams and happy to see him back playing football. In the NBA, the Spurs let one get away last night in Oklahoma City, losing a 20-point third-quarter lead to fall to the Thunder 119-111 for the Spurs' ninth loss in a row. Spurs power forward Isaiah Roby made his return to OKC, and he scored four points in 17 minutes. Roby played his first three seasons in the league with the Thunder, and he was bummed, of course, the Spurs could not hold on to their lead. Uh, you know, we, as a team, I think we started out really well. Um, obviously, didn't have the finish we wanted, but, you know, um, 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know, it kind of hurts right now, obviously, just having that loss. You know, at the end of the day, we just got to execute. You know, it's, it's tough trying to stop a team in transition, you know, all this, through the second half when we're not scoring or we're turning the ball over. So um, just learning, just trying to learn from it. Spurs will host the Pelicans Friday night. New Orleans has won two straight. The Spurs have lost nine in a row. David, Ursula. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to head over to SA Live. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get yourself something one. real pretty. Oh, thank you. <laughs> 500 bucks to buy a lot of pretty stuff. Yes, we're going to tell you how you can win $500. So. And it's the season for precious pictures. We've got tips from the pros on how to take the perfect picture of your family, your kids, and your pets. The lighting, everything, posing, everything you need to know. Speaking of pictures, mm -hmm. we want to see your family pictures. Yes. It's that time. Send those you in. Those Christmas photos, those holiday pictures. Let us know at SA Live Case out on Facebook and Twitter. All right, Breadbox. Tina York is here, and great tip on how to decorate cookies. Yes, great tip is to hold your forearm while you are applying pressure to your royal icing bag to help keep that hand from shaking. Okay, and you have got some boxes of cookies that you can take home to decorate as well. Yes, and of course a great show for the kids over at the Magic Theater. We check out the Velveteen Rabbit. And we got some sweet tamales. That and a lot more on SA Live. Great, welcome back. Lots of clouds out there. Temperatures haven't moved much. We're at 50 degrees. We'll only make it up to about 54 this afternoon. Fog and drizzle develops tonight. Could be a damp start to your Friday. Temperatures will struggle to warm again tomorrow, although it will be warmer. 68 is what we're shooting for right now with still lots of clouds, lots of clouds over the weekend. Now the front on Saturday, which cools us right back down into the 50s. It does warm up next week. Still fairly gray, though, guys. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. We don't have much to say about that forecast. Sorry, Justin. I know what will perk you up, though. And get money. rid of some of that gray, some of that money. Yeah. Some of Mike's money. $500. Love it. And waving that around in our faces. SA Live starts right now. And today on SA Live, where you can see the classic children's story, The Velveteen Rabbit, come to life on stage this Christmas season. Plus, cookie decorating kits and sweets for holiday parties, UTSA celebrations, or any life event. And this local restaurant was featured in a Netflix show for the recipes, and we're going to try out their dessert tamales. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square, this is SA Live. Aw, talk about precious. Hello, Hello and happy Thursday. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mike Osterhage. And I'm Fiona Gorstiza. Well, if you've noticed Mike's face, you know, Baby. the money maker. Baby okay, Baby. that's weird. Very smooth, yeah, very smooth. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, you, you now know that, of course, he's beard free. Yes, we just had the big shave off at the Good Barber earlier today. That's with the goatee right there. And uh, yeah, finally got rid of this because it was bugging me. But I'll tell you what, and there is when Janessa, who did the uh, nice straight razor shave. Oh, that felt so good. Nearly $31,000 that Team KSAT has raised. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody. And thank you especially to Team uh, Silver Fox, Team Gray Hair, because... <laughs> yes. We are ahead of Justin by 10 bucks. $10 is the difference. $5,700. 5741 Justin has 5731 Thank you so very much, everybody. Yeah, appreciate oh, that. Oh, yeah, so. keep those coming. We, gotta, yep. we, we need you to be a little more ahead. So Deep somebody, right yes. So. Okay, and we also want to congratulate my fabulous best co-host co ever, Mike Osterhage, on being nominated for San Antonio Magazine's Best TV Personality. Look at that, it's right there, okay? so. Incredibly well deserved. I don't think Thank you. anyone deserves it as much as you. I mean, you're on every show. I've said it before. You're the Ryan Seacrest of San Antonio. <laughs> well, you're just you're it, everywhere. It it makes it easy when I have great people to work with. So here's so what I need y'all to do. I need you guys to go vote for Mike. Okay. Be sure to go to our uh, website, salive.com. Click on the as seen on SA Live tab where you where we've provided a link and go vote every day because you can. When when do they when's that? ending When's, how much i don't know but that's okay. why we're telling people okay. to do it now <laughs> all right well i appreciate that thank you very much hey our holly jolly week continues by offering a little help on taking those family and pet photos for christmas season because boy you gotta have a good photo 
Absolutely. Nothing like a bad photo, right? right? Okay, joining us is Taylor Jonas, owner of Mama Hen Snapshots. Hi, okay. guys. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. So for those who may not know how to take a great picture, you are doing a free tutorial for folks, uh, you know, to, for, for this year, right? Yeah, absolutely. So um, a lot of times, you know, holidays are the time that we gather together and join together. And a lot of times we miss that opportunity to, uh, to capture those memories. And so what I really like to do is set aside 20 to 40 minutes minutes either before or after dinner um, and take a family photo get the kids get the grandparents get the family and just gather them all together for a photo and you know you're gonna be together so plan ahead a little yeah. bit yes right? absolutely so the first thing that I really like to tell my families about is coordinate outfits so the first thing that I tell my family is either go on my website and look up a color scheme that you really like or you can go um, on my website and there's a bunch of them that you can go and kind of pick which one you like. Um, this is a really good example that we have right here. We styled her in a brown and cream Aztec sweater with a pair of jeans and some boots. Then we styled the baby in a cream shirt and some brown shoes to tie in the brown and her um, jacket and her sweater. And then I paired him in blue jeans too. So he matches really well, but they're not like super matchy matchy. And okay. folks can kind of Google that on, you know, online to find yes. color palettes. You know, to just kind of know exactly. these are the colors that work together. Absolutely. Right? A lot of times people like to do white shirt, blue jeans, but maybe do the yes. women in a different color, men in the white or something. Exactly, yeah. So a lot of my families will either do white or black button ups for the boys, and then we'll do like a black dress or a white dress for the girl. Um, and then we'll add a pair of earrings to have a little bit of pop of color and kind of tie in some more colors into the picture. Okay. All right. So now we're going to talk about something that we yes. know is very important, lighting. Nice. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we can see here there's a lot of lights. We don't like shadows. Shadows, right? Shadows are really bad. I'm sure y'all know shadows are bad on TV. So um, when you're taking a photo, what I like to do is inside, you can face a window if you have a really big window. There's well, let in a lot of natural light, um, and that's going to not cast shadows on anybody's face. Because we have an example of a bad photo. We yes. Took this uh, or yeah, we took this earlier. Earlier and today, yeah. Wrong with it's window. really overcast in the back. It's super bright. We don't like it. It's overexposed. Um, there's some shadows on the arms. There's shadows on the area. There's sun where we don't like. Um, what we really want is we want no shadows on the face, the neck, nothing like that. We want everybody to be bright and super smiley. Okay, and so now we have an example yes. of. And all we did was basically just turn Turned flip the around. around. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So that's a really a really good um, photo right there. There's no shadows on anybody's face. There's no shadows on anybody's hands. Um, it's just a really good example to have where there's no no shadows or anything like that. Okay. What we had done, and yeah. kind of skip past that, yeah. is instead of having the window behind us, we put it in yeah. front of us. Because think about how many Zoom uh, meetings you've been on. Somebody's got that yeah. light, that window behind exactly. them. And it's like, what's going on there? So just face the exactly. window. Exactly. Another good way to do it, too, is go outside. Find a shady spot, even if you're going to do it on a sunny day, find a shady spot. Um, make sure everybody's face is covered and take a photo like up on the screen. Yeah, we found a really good shady spot under the trees. Everybody looks super great. Because bright sunlight yes, is bad. Yes, we do not like okay. harsh sun. Yeah, yeah harsh sun's bad. All right, now we're going to talk posing. Yes, absolutely. So I just personally, I do not like the poses where we're just standing there looking at the camera, kind of blank stare. Okay. So I really like to get my families involved. Get your kids involved. <laughs> yeah. One of my favorite poses is go ahead and have the couples face together and have the younger kids chase around them. You can also tell the older kids smile and look at the camera and kind of sneak off to the side and tell the younger kids, hey, go jump on big sissy or big brother's um, shoulders and it makes for a really good photo. Because you're looking for that natural candid yes, moment, exactly. right? Absolutely. Absolutely, that's what it's about. Because some people can't hold the smile forever and they kind of go. Yeah, for sure. You kind of get yeah. that Ross face or <laughs> like we're yeah. really kind of awkward. <laughs> yeah, yes. exactly. Okay. So we have an example of a like bad pose, mm -hmm. right? Yes, okay. absolutely. Yeah, we can go do ahead we? and pop that up. <laughs> Okay. Um, what we don't want to okay. do when we're, you know, when we're posing, let's not cross our arms. Yeah. We want to be open. Okay. So, so let's so like, like open our like hands. Yeah, right. kind of like awkward and straight face. We don't like that. We also don't like sticking our hands all the way in our pocket mm -hmm. for the guys. You know, stick your hand out. Do leave your a, yeah, just a little bit. Leave your a, thumb out. Kind of pose. Because people don't know what to do with their hands. Exactly. Sometimes, so you exactly. Just have to go like this. Okay. One yeah. tip, real quick, before we go, because we're out of time, posing with animals. Yes, absolutely. So we have our little pet right here. We like to cross our ankle, bring our pet to our face, kiss 
kiss them, cuddle them, and give them lots of kisses for the photos. It makes for a great photo to include all your pets. And so cross your legs always at the ankles, not yes, over the knees. Yes, not knee. over the okay. knees, exactly. All right, okay, how can folks book a session with so you? So you can check out my Instagram or my Facebook at Mama Hen Snapshots, and I have my website, or you can personally message there, and if you mention SA Live when you're messaging me, then you'll get 10% off your booking. Wonderful, right. yeah. for more information on Mama Hen Snapshots, head over to SA Live, of course, dot com. Click on the SA and SA Live tab, or scan that QR code right there on your screen. And we want to remind everyone of an event that needs your support this weekend. Let your little Christmas light shine by Lightwork 316 is happening this Saturday, December 3rd at the Stars and Stripes Drive-In at 5 p.m. The event is a fundraiser for families fighting major medical diagnosis. You can donate, say $10. You can bring your whole family in a car and you'll get to watch Elf and then even the Grinch and there'll be snowballs and hot chocolate yeah. and muscles. So much fun. Perfect, perfect mm -hmm. evening. Okay, so we just took our Christmas picture. Okay, yes. there we go. Mm -hmm. And now we want to see yours. Send, give us those pictures. We've got to see them all because you know you're taking them right now. Yes, so share your holiday photos at SA Live Case out on Facebook and Twitter. And you might see them a little later in the show. Okay, from photos to all sorts of family fun, Jen Tobias Trusky takes us inside Magic Theater's latest show. The Velveteen Rabbit is a classic children's Christmas story that's leaping off the stage and into audiences' hearts. The holidays are all about family, love, and a little magic, and that's what the Magic Theater's latest production is all about. How wonderful! He's perfect! It is just past dawn, and your parents are still asleep. The wishes have frozen! The wishes have frozen! It's snowing, it's snowing! And so, the Valentine Rabbit sat until all the toys were moved to the nursery. Joining me now is Rosa Gardner, the director of Velveteen Rabbit. Hello. Hi. So happy to be here. Hi. I'm excited to have you here. Well, let's talk about the storyline. Yeah. Um, the Velveteen Rabbit, it's a classic story, and so we haven't, you know, shifted that too much. It's about a child who receives a toy rabbit, but, you know, I say toy, but it's all about what is real. Yeah. So the the rabbit becomes real to the child, and it's about their friendship and their story and, and how they grow together and, and learning about what, what real is and what love does for us to make us feel real. Um, and so it's got lots of, lots of feelings. It's not just all laughs, you know, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's got the highs, it's got the lows, it's got, it's got all the feelings, and oh. so it's pretty special. How could you describe the experience for families who will bring their kids here? Because you also have some goodies for them to enjoy, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. It's going to be a fun thing to bring the family to. We, of course, have concessions. So mm -hmm. there's popcorn. There's fun things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a beautiful Christmas tree to start. So yes. you come in and it feels festive. And there's nice music playing. And it's just going to be a great experience for the family, especially at this time of year. Awesome. Now, normally, we've been here in the past and seen you actually on stage now you're directing tell me about that experience for you this is my first time directing uh, a, a full show like this and it's been amazing uh, it's a challenge but it is a challenge that I love uh, and so I have done I think 20 shows here on stage so what? it's fun to what? yeah I know right I know <laughs> <laughs> but I love it um, so it's been really cool to do the same thing but like in a different way from a different perspective and I love it so I kind of want to do it again oh, yeah awesome. <laughs> I can't wait to see what the future has for you now for those who would like to come uh, what are the dates and times if you can share some of that sure first. we run through December 24th mm -hmm. and so we have some field trip performances during the week and then we're open to the public on the weekends typically those shows are Saturdays at 2 mm -hmm. um, and we have some evening shows um, and then Sundays at 3 as well we also have some extra um, performances that, that are extra um, specifically special for things like sensory friendly and um, we have a, an American Sign Language night, uh, interpreted night, and um, a pay what you wish so that um, anyone at, at any price point is able to come and see the show. And so I want to make sure people know about those too. Yes, so. and for those who have never been to the Magic Theater, it's such a great place and then where you're located as well, there's so much for families to do. Oh, right? that's one of the things I love about, I love about being here. Uh, if you come, there's a park that you can play in, there's Hemisphere Park. It's, it's a gorgeous part of downtown and so there's so many many things that are within walking distance and I get to see that every day working here it's pretty cool so yeah. awesome a great experience thank you so much
much. Thank you. And for more information on Velveteen Rabbit, you can head over to EssayLive.com, click the As Seen on Essay Live tab, or scan the QR code on your screen. Thank you so much. And he had real thread whiskers that wiggled. That just brings what back so many memories there. What a fun show for the kids. At yeah. that the Magic Theater like that with the kids. What a wonderful place and great show. All right. When I Say Live continues, Netflix featured restaurant. We give their dessert tamales a try and chat with them about an upcoming event. Plus, it's sweet and savory Panamanian cuisine that'll have you saying, mmm, panadas. That's next on SA Live. Mm -hmm.